Good evening and a very warm welcome to you. How are you all? Thank you for joining the Oz Crow Soccer Show Season 1, but we're already up to Episode 20 and gosh, hasn't the year flown. My name is Taunchy Pulsats and joining me all the way from sunny and there we hope a dry Gold Coast, Josip Zilic. Josip, how is it up there on the, uh, on the Golden Strip? Look, mate, it's been absolutely perfect. Uh, I can't complain. It's been a great, <laughs> a great week of sunny weather, 19, 20 degrees. And, uh, yes, thanks, Tunchi, and, and uh, good day to all the viewers uh, out there from all across the country and hopefully internationally as well. Yeah, it's going to be a massive show tonight, folks. A lot, a lot of news happening both locally and internationally. And, Yossi, we are all cupped out, but there's still a lot of Australia Cup action happening, some... Um, some uh, Good moments, not so good moments from last night, some big cup games in Sydney and in Melbourne, but we've also got a big one happening across the Nullarbor at the moment. Have we got a progress score from that game? Yeah, yeah the Guelph Croatia under-18s are uh, in the quarterfinal of the under eighteen statewide cup, and they are currently down 2-1, just approaching half time there, mate. So uh, yeah, they were down 1-0, full back leveled it out and uh, now down 2-1. Um, Matt Jurcevic, thank you for the updates there. And he's telling me that the rain has just subsided. So it's a wet and boggy pitch, mate. So it could be anything tonight. And then Fingers later on, crossed. later on, Fingers later on, we'll crossed, catch up with West. We'll also catch up Western Knights. Uh, they're taking on Bayswater as well. Awesome. So fantastic. Lots of lots, lots to get through tonight, folks. Uh, make sure you hang around. Now, we've got a lot of news from the Australian scene. We've got heaps of news, in fact. We've got some great, great footage from last night's uh, um, or post last night's Australia Cup game between the big Croatian derby. Apparently, Josipe, 52 years in the making, like an actual yeah. proper Croatian derby for something serious, not a friendly or Crow yeah, we are, we are um, event. in Victoria, in, like, in Victoria, Tunch, you and I, we know we've we've come across it many, many times uh, in NPL, in cup matches, and all sorts of things. And um, you know, it's just one of those things, I guess, in New South Wales that the the team, the Croatian teams, never ended up in the same league or in the same competition structure. And this was the first for them, so well done. Celebration of Croatian sporting culture. And we're going to be covering a little bit of that later on as well. Uh, we've also got heaps of news and lots of news, in fact, happening. For these. Um, here we go. Matt Yurchevich just says, Cup game, NPL men's under-18s, Bayswater versus Guelph, Croatia first half. Unfortunately, um, Bayswater... 3-1 at the moment. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, thanks, Matt. But uh, look, let's have the boys can lift for the second half and make a contest out of it. Now, um, we've also got, I suppose on, on, a, on a sad note, we've got a bit of orb of yes, as they say, information. Um, the This week, the, um, the funeral details for... Our great friend Maxi Santich um, was announced, um, who he passed away. Um, there you go, age 36 on, on the 29th of May. So that's going to be next Tuesday at the Sveti Leopold Bogdan Mandic Church, i.e. the Sunshine yeah. Croatian Church. That's um, at 12 o'clock. Um, uh, at the conclusion of the master funeral, we'll proceed to Kilo Cemetery for burial. Um, and then thereafterwards, refreshments will follow the burial at the St. Albans Dinner More Soccer Club at Fox Street. Um, for those of you in Geelong, in Melbourne, Ballarat, Victoria, Gippsland, wherever, um, Gorsbich Bears did uh, make that pre-season trip to, to Gippsland as well, and they made an absolute impression on the um, Croatian community there. 
Um, if it's a Petrlich's old haunt, he tells me, and uh, it's something that they want to um, want to make an annual event as well. So um, yeah, do do come along to the um, funeral next week. It's going to be huge, and as a result, because it's Tuesday and because um, we've got um, other commitments on the on the Wednesday, Josipe, we're going to take a I suppose another mid mid season break. Um, yep. After 20 episodes, I think we deserve it. There's just been so much <laughs> happening and it's just been full on. So um, we, 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 we will not be back next week. And then the week after, we're back to our Tuesday time slot. So in two weeks' yep. time, we'll be doing our Tuesday show. Yeah, and just on um, not- notifications to Tunchi, our uh, heartfelt condolences go out to the Pondayak family on the loss yeah. of uh, Dragutin. Dragut says he's affectionately known. Um, and, and we know Oli and Tommy so affectionately over the years playing for Melbourne Knights and St. Albans and Tommy even for victory and into, into the Socceroos. Um, so, I, again, our heartfelt condolences to the St. Albans football community. They have seem to have taken a couple of big knocks over the last couple of weeks, mate. Yeah. Um, it, it's just been a shocking year in, in that regard. Shocking year. Folks, um, join us in the ch- in the chat. Um, put down your comments. Put down any score updates. Thank you, Matt Yurcevic, uh, once again for keeping us updated. We will be also crossing over live to Perth um, a little bit later on. Josipe, um, yeah. tell us a bit more about our our guest for tonight. We'll we'll catch up with uh, Dean's Landich, uh, the president of Western Knights, who we've uh, had a chat with earlier on in the year. Um, and he will give us a bit of an insight about what to expect from the Western Knights as they take on the MPL um, team of Bayswater. Uh, we, we remember that conversation, Tonch, uh, early on in the year before their season kicked off. They made a point that they wanted to have a long run in the Cup again like they did a, mm. uh, three, yep. about three seasons ago. Um, and let's get the, that energy behind them. And uh, look, we've got Sydney United still in the cup. Uh, wouldn't it be great in that in that final 30 to 64, 32 teams um, to have Sydney United and the Western Knights, East and West covered? 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, mate, the big question. After last week's um, um, brilliant start with our new segment, Svizdayu Anemayu Poima, um, <laughs> is it back? Is it back? It's People back. want to know. It's back. It's on, mate. It's on. Ah, it's on. Hold on to your horses, folks. It's on. That'll mate. be coming on a little bit later on. All right, yeah. folks, we're going to take a very, very short break here on the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It's episode 20, season one. When we return, it's the news desk, and we'll be getting straight into the Australian Croatian Roundup. Heaps to get through tonight. Don't go away. Are you one of those people that just pays their business insurance each year? Insurance is the last thing we want to worry about when running our business day to day, unless there is a claim that needs to be made, right? And once we have our insurance in place, we just keep renewing it. We just find it too hard to shop around. Does that sound like you? Well, at your business insurance, we could save you money and get you a better deal. We'll review your current insurance and determine if you're getting the most favourable offers from the insurance market. Call your business insurance on 1300 767 456. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show, and it's time for our Oz Crow wrap up. Uh, over, in, we'll start the uh, proceedings over in the West with Western Knights. As we as we know, they um, they're going to be taking on Bayswater at the MPL outfit in tonight's um, uh, cup action. Yep. Um, and just checking, it's still half time with the under 18s in Guelph, Croatia. Yep, that's still sitting at three one for Bayswater at the minute. Uh, yes, we will cross to Dean's Landish, the president of Western Knights. But uh, before we do that, they'll come on a little late in the show. On the weekend, the Western Knights had a 2-1 loss, unfortunately, to second place Mandra. Possibly distracted with cup preparations. Uh, we'll never know, but uh, they'll be able to prove their worth tonight. Uh, they moved to fourth with a match in hand. And on the weekend, they have the, uh, the, uh, the tough ask of uh, taking on fifth place Subiaco away. Um, we do have a little uh, photo, Tonch. Have you got the uh, photo of the young men at the gate? 
Oh no, I think I no, have got that. Oh, my apologies. Oh, you did send it through. You did oh, send it through. And um uh, oh, my apologies for that. Um hopefully look during the course of the thing we'll try and get it. If not, yeah. it is on the Western Nights um Facebook page, I do yeah. believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah what, a, what, a, what a pity. My young apologies. Cadets, young cadets from Western Nights, uh Alan Petsatich's uh young young boys, Martin and Anton, learning the tricks of the trade of the monitoring and maintaining the gatekeeping for the ground collection so uh you gotta you gotta teach them early and i'm sure yeah. martin and anton will be, uh, are perfect at it uh we'll move yeah. over to Gwellop men the Gwellop men team they had a nil all draw with mid-table perth glory youth so there's just a little bit of form change there for the Gwellop's uh Gwellop's men team um yep they'll uh they're gonna start they're starting to accumulate a few points so their focus this week is on perth red star and Despite the name Red Star, they're not uh, a Yugo club. Just <laughs> somehow picked out that name, unless yeah, someone in WA yeah. wants to prove me wrong, but I don't see any inclination there that they're a Yugo club. Uh, and Perth Red Star sit in third at the moment. So they've got a big ask, but they are starting to accumulate points. So keep going, Will. You can do it. Still, though, I can't. I, I don't know about that name, mate. I, I really do not know about that name. It's just Sramota. Sramota. Yeah, yeah. Ask me, fair dinkum, but uh, oh well. Um, but anyway, yeah. look, um, guess what? I've managed to find that track. It there it is. There's that. Ah, there it is. Look at him. Look at the champions. <laughs> so the, yeah, look, Martin's the eldest one there, and Anton's the younger one. Uh, they're, they're the Best little boys. Uh, I got I had the pleasure of meeting them a couple of years ago, just before COVID broke out, mind you. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're good little boys. And there's Alan, who's uh, an accountant by trade, no doubt, teaching them one for the club, two for the club, three for the club, four, <laughs> one for the one club. One for you, five for me. <laughs> one for you, six for me. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. No, good stuff. That's that's brilliant. Yeah. Getting back to, to Guel up there. Uh, but that Red Star, I don't know, mate. There's none. In yeah. this day and age, to have a name. And that was, well, mind you, this is their first year, isn't it? I mean, there's it's, it was an amalgamation of a few clubs and they've come up. Yeah, with it was. Yeah, it was three different Star. clubs. Yeah, I did have the details on it earlier on in the year when we were covering it. But, um, yeah. yeah, I can't remember who they formed with. I don't, I don't know. But as main thing is Guel up beats them. That's, that's the main thing. There's, there's three consonants in the Croatian language that basically describe everything and it's probably the three the three consonants no vowels and it's the best word that ever exists in the Croatian language have a guess mrsh <laughs> <laughs> mrsh no, I don't know that describes everything about that name I don't know anyone else agree <laughs> yeah quite likely mate. quite likely you got many on board for that one yeah uh, the Guelph women, they had a cup cup round by uh, uh, this week. Uh, the, the amateur Division Two women, they'll take on a local rival North Beach, though. So uh, last week, they had the cup round. Mm. Uh, lots of games in hand for them coming, though. So, um, look, they'll have to play a lot of catch-ups, but I think they can manage it. Uh, and um, good luck to them this weekend against North Beach. Uh, no current update on the 18s. They mustn't have been back on the park just yet. But Matt Yurchevich is keeping us informed, so we'll keep good it on you, Matt. Out on that. Keep them coming. Uh, over to wine country, South Australia. The Adelaide Raiders had themselves a 2-1 loss to uh, West Adelaide Hellas. Uh, it was a tight affair from all I can gather in terms of commentary from social media. Um, Look, they're uh, they're doing well. They're still they're still up there in the top five, and uh, it is a closer race now that they had that loss. Mm. Uh, but they can turn their focus onto bottom placed Adelaide Hills and try and resurrect their form once again. Uh, the women's team had another postponement due to weather. Uh, actually, my brother was out in WA. My brother Ivan, if he's still there, I hope you're enjoying your little visit there. Mm. Uh, Adelaide Vukovi, they had their matches versus Paynham also postponed due to the weather. So they, I don't know if anyone caught the news, but w, uh, South Australia had um, some pretty lashing storms. Was that really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, over to the Upper Isle, Tonch. Let's have a look at the Glenor came in. Tassie. The place, yep. The second place Knights. <coughs> excuse me. They had a 2-1 loss to Devonport, top team Devonport Strikers, and their test continues because it's going to be another tough one. They face third place South Hobart this week. So, uh, yeah, no no better opportunity to resurrect your form than to take on the, the teams that are around you and beat them and get yourself on the right track. The Glenorchy women, the uh, Southern Championship side, they had a 5-2 loss to Hobart Beachside. They slipped to seventh. Uh, they have a bye this week. 
And then the Championship Division 1 team, they had a 2-0 loss to University. They also slipped to 7th and they also have a bye this week. My guess is the women's comp is having a, uh, a cup round, but it wasn't stated. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's go over to the nation's capital, my friend. And O'Connor over men, Canberra. Yep, yeah, O'Connor women, they had themselves a nice 7-3 win over Bell West. Whilst the uh, O'Connor men didn't have a match last week as they had definitely had their uh, cup match rounds, which O'Connor was knocked out of the round before. But this week, the O'Connor men, they take on fourth-placed uh, Canberra Olympic. So that's going to be a good clash for them. They're sort of like-for-like -like competition, and Canberra Olympic are probably uh, the most vociferous crowd aside from the Croatian community in the ACT League. <laughs> I like that word. Yeah. Uh, over to Canberra, Croatia. Their men also had a, round, uh, a buy around this just a week past. Top of the ladder, still heading into this week's clash with Kuma Tigers, and I think they'll be able to dispatch them quite easily. The Canberra women, they're away to Wagga Wagga this week, so a bit of a road trip, and I dare say another shellacking for Wagga coming their way. Top of the ladder girls, they're absolutely blitzing the competition. Well done. Well, we may we might take a break. We'll take a bit of a breather. A lot to get through, heaps to get through. And a big shout out to all of our advertisers and sponsors and all of the clubs that have supported us in these first 20 episodes. Um, but we do need your support. We'd love to get see episode 30. We'd love to see episode 40, which will take us through to the uh, the uh, Australian Croatian big soccer tournament um, in final in Sydney to be hosted by Kral Tomisla. But we need you, the clubs, and we need the businesses to help us and get on board. So uh, do support all those organisations that do support us as well. And uh, here's one of them. We're going to take a short break when we return. Part two of the Australian-Croatian Roundup with uh, Mr. Zilic. Part two of our Australian-Croatia Roundup. And Josipe, speaking of clubs that have supported us, the club that's that right from the starting blocks, they supported us, the Gorspich Bears. Um, they've had some very emotional wins and some memorable wins um, in recent, or over the weekend, just gone by. Yeah, look, uh, Gorspich Bears, uh, they took on Hume United. Um, and look, they were down 1-0 at half time. Uh, they scored one all, uh, then conceded and went behind 2-1. Uh, they kept fighting, kept pressuring, kept playing good football, got rewarded, equalised the 2 all with 15 minutes to go. Game now in the balance, minutes to go. Drama building, steps up Philip Ognanovsky, a very good friend of Maxi's, and slots home the winner. Oh. They come three points, 3-2, three, go Bears. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well and that, done. Look, on, fr on Friday night, too, mate, the Masters took on Albion Rovers and they had a convincing 4-1 win. And it was great to see. Look, it's been a huge emotional week for both the teams yeah. uh, and to take out the three points in, in honour of, of Maxi, uh, ahead of, especially ahead of his funeral. Um, it's a nice nice send-off. And there's, and the, there's details. the details once again. Yeah, yeah. So next Tuesday at 12, right on noon, um, family and friends are invited to attend a rosary and a mass for Maxi, which will be held at the Croatian Church in Sunshine, Sveti Leopold Bogdan Mandic. That's at 12. Straight after that, the funeral will proceed to Kilo Cemetery for burial. Uh, and it, it tells you all that information there. Burial will take place in a new section yeah. left on Alley Court. And the family has also, also, has also organized for the funeral to be live streamed. So there it is www.vividstream.online forward slash mio dash santich. And I think 
A lot of people have found out that Maxi's real name is Mio. We didn't know that. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> uh, it's a bit like a lot Mickey, of Mickey C. Mickey C's real name's Mio. There you go. Well, really? It's, yeah. it's up to you now. There uh-huh. you go. You'll learn something new every day. Um, and refreshments will follow the burial at St. Albans St. Soccer Club Dinamo at Fox Street St. Albans there. And, um, yeah, it's a difficult time. It is a really, really difficult time. And I think our morning, uh, our collective morning will continue, but we'll also remember, um, you know, re- remember the good times. And, Yossi, you, you actually put a really, really lovely post earlier today, um, you know, how, how he'll always kind of – he was always there, but he'll, he'll always be with us in many, many ways, yeah. And um, we keep looking at the chat thinking he might come up there, but somehow I just feel he's still there. Like, I don't know, he's – Duch yeah. is, is, is still there, you know, but yeah. um, it should be yeah. should be a tough Look, day. Uh, but uh... my uh, my moment in, during the week came to me where I looked at that GoFundMe page and um, yes. I thought to myself, "Oh my God, this is this is a, a credit to the culture of what Gorspich Bears has created over the years, but also." The people and, and wider community that have embraced them. It's one it's one thing to create a culture at a club or a community, but it's another it's another one that when you perpetuate the feeling of um, wanting to be around that culture and embracing it, and when you've made such warm relationships um, it, over the journey of your existence, it, it just goes to show that um, that result. There's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars there being raised for the family mm. to be able to get through. What we all know, unfortunately, we've been through those circles with our parents, Tonch. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it, they're costly affairs, and that's the last thing that a widow um, needs to be considering, let alone a widow who's expecting to give birth to. Hundred percent, hundred percent, absolutely, absolutely. And I love their motto. I love, I love the Gorse Beach Bears motto: "Once a maid, always a maid; or once a bear, always a bear." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's yeah. that you know typifies that that culture. Yeah. yeah. Um, another family club or another club that has a really good family feel about it. And most of our Croatian clubs are like this, but uh, Strathmore Split in the northern suburbs of Melbourne, um, they are renowned for really being a very friendly oriented club. And we talk about Mickey C. Mio, Mio Cholina. We talk about Mio. <laughs> yeah. He's the new coach there. How are Strathmore going? Oh, look, they're going really well. Uh, first oh, things oh, first. Look uh, yeah, look, we'll, we'll jump onto the senior men's. The 4-0 win over Whittlesea United. So, look, Whittlesea United gave them a touch-up early in the year. So, uh, it's, yeah, due, they're paying them back uh, probably in twofold. Uh, so, they've got themselves a nice big 4-0 win, jumping up uh, with, I don't, actually, they're still sitting in second last, but I think they're only a point away from jumping into third last. So, uh, the, yeah. They're going in the right direction. Mickey C's got some some good football happening, and they've the guys are tightened up the ship out back. Um, so yeah, well done. Uh, the women's team unfortunately had a six-one loss uh, to Faulkner, so they'll need to uh, uh, put their focus on Pascal Vale this week and try and get their form resurrected. Um, Division Two Metro. They had a solid 2-1 win over Newport on Friday night. Uh, the eighth place Strathmore take on Moreland in ninth this week. The Sultans. Of sexy football, the master <laughs> team. Aren't the directors in, tuning in tonight? Have some stern words with these men. They they clearly didn't put on their sexy football. They <laughs> got blacked by Manningham Juve 7-1. So uh, not, not, not good. Back on against Old Ivanhoe this week. I'm sure they can do it because we, we know they're renowned for it. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll make it happen. Don't worry about that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Tosh, before we jump over to North Geelong, just quickly, uh, in uh, Vic Soccer, Bukovart had a nil-all draw against Port Phillips uh, Spiders, sitting in third, and NK Bunker defeated Satellite City 7-2. They're sitting. So good to see the, uh, the Croatian clubs second and third in that league. Fantastic. Now, uh, on to North Geelong, mate. We've got a little bit of footage here as well as as um, as we t- we're about to show. Uh, these are highlights from uh, the game, and uh, there's something you want to talk about. This first goal. Yep, this is my Swiss nail a poem or nail moment. 
Thanks to uh, our friend, Ezekiel Kalatz, who uh, raised this great theme for us. Young Noah Skorko is 16 years of age. Since the start of the season, has been part of the starting 11 at North Geelong. Contributes to the midfield week in, week out. Is only ever substituted if the head coach feels that he may be in some sort of physical danger. Yep. Otherwise, he plays 90 minutes week in, week out. 16 years of age, and he's finishing chances like you saw on that video footage. Yet somehow, the powers that be, the select down the 17s, Joey's, chose to overlook him. So, Sviz Nail, I point him on their mail. That was Kayla Mikulic as well with a, with a great goal there. Now, mate, I've yeah. seen a lot of North Geelong games, obviously. And, um, in fact, um, uh, not this week, but in the next home game, uh, uh, hopefully it'll actually be streamed. So people will oh. be able to watch that live. Um, I have got it on good authority that it will be streamed live. You'll be able to see now. Now, people can t- maybe yeah, say, week oh, the week yeah. after. Next week, yeah. So this week, um, I think they're up against the newly renamed Brunswick Juventus. Now, here's a scoop, folks. Moreland Zebras have changed their name to Brunswick Juventus. Yep. Um, I do not know exactly what is going on there. That I was think in the course, was wasn't about it? it? Yes, that's right. Vidish does not. Brunswick Zebras. Yeah. Brunswick Zebras were complaining. Yeah, so it looks like uh, the Mall and Zebras Club or whatever it is, they must have either won that or they've come to an agreement. They've actually changed it. So if you go in the NPL, all the, all the NPL ladders and fixtures at Football Victoria on Football Victoria's website, it actually says Brunswick Juventus. But um, going back to young Noah, um, 16 years of age. He just turned 16, I think, in, in January. And, um, yes, yeah, speaking to his coach, Stuart Begg, I mean, he rates him. He, he rates this guy. And, look, um, is it because the obscurity of MPL two? I don't think so. I mean, he has been on the radar, and yep. um, and, and look, there are some unbelievably talented young kids running around at the moment, and they're just not getting a look. And we've said that the the, the, the scouting or the or, or the uh, the way things are being selected. I, I don't know. Is it you have to now be part of an A League club to be noticed, to be identified, to be automatically? Been given a bit more. I don't know. You don't know. It, it, what, what we've what we've discovered through the conversations that we we have these fantastic conversations with coaches and players <laughs> over, over the course of this year and, yep. and 20, 20 rounds of it. One thing that's pretty clear is that the scouting network is not functional. No, that's that's, that's first no. and first and foremost. That's that's that. Then then I, I get it. If if you if you put the kid in say. I think Noah and a couple of others from North Geelong were in the were in the top thirty two and then they got chopped out at the last last cut when there was down to twenty three players. What you're gonna do with players like Noah is look, if he if he gets an opportunity to go to Europe, he won't look back. Could mm-hmm. you imagine if he ends up in Europe and starts starts getting under the uh the radar of someone like Simos and under nineties national coach at Croatia? Yep. Yeah. It, it just like the young Christian Volpato in Roma. He's Great elected. example. He's gone to under-19s Italy. So mm. what's, what, what's to stop someone like Noah to go under-19s Croatia? Well, a str- there's a really good article. There's a really good article that's come out by um, the ages Michael Lynch. Um, and and it's, it's a compilation of about five or six different factors why the Socceroos have gone from being Asian giants to basically bit players, as he calls them. He's um, spoken to um, four or five different types, d- different people, coaches, players, ex-players, um, agents, this and that, whatever. Um, and, and something is seriously wrong when your senior team is struggling. I mean, yes, they won- d- defeated United Arab Emirates just, by the way, just 2-1 overnight. Oh, look, well done to um, them. Well done. Oh, oh, good, I'm absolutely. Delighted. And uh, look... I hope why, no one thinks why are they that. in that position in the first place. Exact. That's what it is. That's what it is. They should never have been in this position in the first place. That's exactly right. Anyway, moving along. Um, so let's talk about North Geelong. North with... Geelong. So the men, big four-one win, nice convincing win over North City. They were the only team, or they really are the only team that's taken uh, the win off um, North Geelong. 
So in the first catch up, in the first uh, hit out, to, uh, they had a two nil win over North, but so North paid them back in a couple fold. Revenge. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And now as a result of uh, Moreland City getting a shellacking by Bulleen, there's a, I think it's a six or seven point gap um, between North Geelong and Moreland City. Seven. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, and to, the... to make things interesting, Moreland City got thumped eight to nil by Bulleen on Monday night. Eight nil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so those two red cards real, that they copped against North the week before, yeah, it's really re- cost them, and they copped another red card, Moreland City. So, that's really going to shake that top two, three teams out, yeah. So, North Geelong up against Brunswick Juventus, who I think are in about sixth spot this week, and then following week yeah. at home against Lang Warren, and that game will be streamed live, so you'll be able to uh, watch North Geelong for the first time this year, yeah, um, terrific. All right. Well, uh, the women's team, unfortunately, had a 4-3 loss to Spring Hills. And speaking of Brunswick Juventus, well, the North women are taking on Brunswick Juventus too. And that's where Laura Spiranovic, former warrior, is at at the moment. There you go. Yeah. We, we, we wish Laura every, all, all uh, well, but certainly not in this game against North Geelong. <laughs> no, no. Just leave the no. points alone. Our women will take That's it. Home. Yeah. Yeah. On to the NPL, uh, you'll see. Yeah, on to NPL, Dandy City, man. They had a stirring 2-1 win over Hume on the weekend, mate. Uh, I don't know if you caught any footage of this. Um, I got excited when I saw Luban running around like Klopp on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, they're sitting in second last there, but they've got a lot of work ahead of them to try and resurrect themselves into uh, away from the automatic relegation areas. But it helps when you beat the team that's right above you too. So they, they, they beat Hume, who's in third last, and closing the gap on them. This week, they take on a strong Green Gully outfit. There's a great finish there by <laughs> Nicky Kalmer. I think the keeper must have just a little bit... Un- uh, didn't quite read the flight of the ball in the in the wind there. And it's a really windy place, ABD Stadium. I don't know if you've been out there, Tunch. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is very windy. Well, the wind like, cuts right times. through you. Yeah. The but yeah, well done to Luban and the boys. Good to see them getting some uh, form and all the best for this weekend. The Dandy women, uh, fifth place women's team lost 5 2 to Glen Ira. So they, uh, they're they facing last place Rosebud this week and hopefully get some form back on their way. Over to St Albans, mate. They had a, uh, a disappointing 3 0 three loss to Avondale at home, dropping to 11th spot now. Uh, they just can't seem to get that consistency right um, on a week to week basis. So uh, they've got a big test ahead of them. South Melbourne, who are coming off a loss uh, to Melbourne Knights, nonetheless. So uh, hopefully that loss has sort of given a, a dint of confidence and St. Albans can uh, try and raise to the, rise to the occasion there. The St. Albans women, they, they lost 3 1 to Altona City. And they head off to Ballarat to try and uh, lift from eighth spot this week, mate. Over to two Melbourne Knights. Now, we know that they had a uh, the cup match against Oakley. Sadly, went down 4-0. Uh, they just couldn't take up the fight. Um, and Oakley, just a little bit better in class in the end. And, and at the end of the day, they've taken away that opportunity to extend their run in the cup. But uh, well done to the Knights for getting this far. Uh, look, they're always pushing themselves in the cup runs and we know that Melbourne Ice take great pride in that too. So well done. You know, don't don't lose faith just because of that cup round. You did really well against South Melbourne with a fantastic goal to Gian Albano with the dying seconds. They led early. They copped the goal in the middle of the second half. Gian collected the ball halfway uh, near the halfway line near the um near Berber's bench. Took on three players, cut inside and just Tipped it right over the over the keeper. It was fantastic. And speaking of Melbourne Knights, uh, they had a trivia night in Zagreb of all places, don't you? Some familiar flav faces there. Second from left, the V bomber and uh, a Strathmore split or Glenroy split, as they'd know. The fella right on the far left, Frankie Yelinchich, who yeah. uh, oh gosh, it's been about fifteen years since he he went to uh, to Croatia um, and it ended well, up Magdich staying the there. Middle. Paul Mudditch, yes, there he yeah. is as well. Oh, I heard, goodness I heard me. Silla, Silla was there, but I can't see him in the photo. He's probably hiding right at the back over there. Oh, we got another photo. It was, is he there? No, he's not. He's probably hiding somewhere. Can't see him anywhere. Uh, he's probably having a bungo outside. <laughs> <laughs> this was at the Bornstein Wine Bar. Um, yeah. Ivan Srpek and uh, 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 his wife. Uh, Ivan is from Australia, I believe. Um, as well, I'm not sure is it from Adelaide or, or... Not, sure. not too sure. 
Yeah, but um, it, it is in the heart of Zagreb, right near the um, capital, right near the um, what is part it's... of the capital suburb, right near the cathedral there. But uh, yeah. yeah, what a great thing this was, hey? Yeah. So okay. um. I got the heads Go up from Jozo Kol- Kolakosic that him and uh, Robbie Gojevic had been instrumental in this too. So it's, yep. um, it's good. It, I reckon it's great. There's been a lot of expats heading back and it's a nice way for them to all connect and, you know, get together. Chris Malik was there too from what I hear. So yeah. I think most of us have, have met or run into Chris over the years either on the onshore here or overseas. Yeah, fantastic. No, it's great to see. Great to see. And, uh, and Mark v- Viduka as well. Um, there as well, uh, mixing with some of the, some of the uh, as everyone's starting to age a little bit, but uh, mixing with uh, with all the old expats there, it's it's great Fala to Bogle. see and uh, Fala yeah. Bogle, I say exactly, yeah. absolutely. Anyway, back to uh, back to Australia, we go and up north to the uh, New South Wales um, region, uh, yeah. sub- state, um, South Coast United. Tell me, mate, did they play on the weekend or was they, it? Right they now? they did. The canoes have been put away. <laughs> Thanks to Ivo Spanicek for sending through the graphics too. Well done, Ivo. Uh, so 10th place, United well done, had a 2-0 two, two loss to Paul Kembler. Uh, they'll look to return to form this week in their battle against 7th place, Coniston, at, uh, at Ian McClellan. Uh, okay, uh, over to Hurstville Zagreb. We know they had their cup match uh, last night. They did go down 2-0, unfortunately, to Sydney United. Look, we are delighted that the our Croatian team continues the run in the cup. But it's unfortunate yeah. that they have to face off against one another. But it was a great event. It was really good to see the live stream occur and uh, Ante and uh, Tony Chavard uh, on there entertaining us with their delightful commentary. It's sad that we won't, won't be hearing it, with, uh, but yeah, look, it was great while it lasted. And, and thank Tony and Ante for... Um, for sharing that, for sharing those nights with us, it's, it felt like yeah. I was there yeah. every time. Now, oh, um, we've got some footage. We've got some footage there, Josip, of uh, of the dynamic duo. Let's call them that in action. Well, actually, they'll be interviewed with this one, and it was on Hurstville Zagreb's official um, social media. So, uh, take a take a, uh, a, a second, folks, and take in this rather entertaining uh, interview with the uh, dynamic duo, who are fast developing a cult-like status, Tony Chavard and Ante MC Grabovac. We're at the Sydney United Sports Centre for a couple of guys who have kept us entertained during the uh, Cup games this year, but also at the start at the London Centre last year against Canterbury Berries. And we're talking about Tony Chavard and Ante Grabovac. Guys, welcome. Hey, thanks so much, Zach. As always, we love talking to you. <laughs> it's been a great, been a great feedback with you guys. Um, you know, a bit of tongue in cheek and a bit of fun uh, at the um, Canterbury uh, Marrickville or the Berries uh, Cup game in Hilda last year, and uh, you decided to get together and do it all again. Yeah, definitely. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, two games at Penthes Park, the new facility, they were really good. Two great wins for Zagreb. And now, of course, tonight, the biggest derby, basically, in football for a Croatian community that we've ever had in Sydney. You know, in Melbourne, they've got it quite often. Yep. In Perth, it happens, but here, yeah, we've never had it. And so it was a great night. And it was a privilege. 52 years of the making. Uh, Absolutely. Never been uh, met in an official capacity. We've played each other in uh, Australian Croatian tournaments yeah. previously, yeah. in friendlies and my stuff. But, yeah, we've never uh, actually... So uh, the feedback you've been getting through the comments and that you've been working through those and getting a few laughs as well. Yeah, definitely. And it's good to see the memories come floating back once you see, you know, behind the hill where we used to stand as teenagers and what used to happen and all the players and the people commenting and getting in. So it's, it makes it all fun. It does. It does. I mean, most of the old days, I mean, you know, we used to have a church picnic and then, you know, united, you know, and then, you know, obviously, um, yeah, it was Sunday. a tradition back those days, yeah, 100%. Yeah, Sunday used to be Sunday, you know, um, so, so Sunday is over, Sunday is united, so that's how it was, and, um, you know, now it's doing the same at the moment, but no picnic, no, um, but <laughs> well, we go to church. Saturday nights at Pennsylvania Park is, uh, lots of fun. Lots so, of fun, yes. Beautiful. Well done, Arthur. Congratulations, your 50th birthday yesterday, mate. Well done. Thank you. you don't don't me, Jack. Oh, don't sorry. Me. He's not 50. What is he? 49. 49 plus GST. I'm yeah. Away. Uh, <laughs> away, <laughs> away, <laughs> away. 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 <laughs> Never ages. Well, Tony and Arthur, you've been really uh, good, very entertaining. I'm sure all of 
people would have loved it tuning in if they couldn't make Mate, that. Look, look at the jobs that are, you know, commentating, Channel 10 if you think about Paramount, about us, Paramount, <laughs> Paramount, we're here. Uh, SBS, we're here, World <laughs> Cup. Uh, we're not doing cycling. <laughs> no, 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 SBS, you know, whatever. Whatever you, whatever you want us to do, we'll do it. Stan Sports. Stan right. Sports, Doesn't take Boston on here. The uh, cut run of the Hurstville FC comes to an end here at the Sydney United Sports Centre, but these two guys have given us some fantastic subscriptions. Thank you very much, gents. Yes, no doubt we'll uh, see you again next year in that Thank role. You so oh, much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thank Tony. Thanks, Arthur. No worries. How yeah, good's that? <laughs> Anything good someone has cycled, just not cycling, huh? But how, yeah. how, what about the cheesy green by Ante Grabites there showing the furly lights there? Ah, oh, fantastic. Great stuff. Yeah. Two two great characters and um and um, I can see Tony's Tony's on the show uh, on the chat line. Tony, hello Tony. I'm sure Ante yeah. Ante Grabites, if he's not on live, he tunes in every week. So gents, um keep up the great work. Um, I am looking for a commentating partner down at North Geelong in two weeks' time. So, against uh-huh. Lane Warren, if anyone's prepared to <laughs> come down to Elko Park, Zashtlin. Um, yeah. Mate, lots lots happening. So, uh, hey, Lisa, just quickly, yeah. I've picked up on the music on the background. I can't, couldn't help but pick up on a Pulubi Zemu, right? <laughs> and well, I, I think back to my days when I lived in Sydney. Uh, Tony used to work at the bar, at uh, Million Course Bar, they called it. And it, it, like, you think to yourself, you know, that typifies the man, right? Pudubi Zemu loves um, loves the club, loves the community. Yeah. He's shared his love across Hurstville and Sydney, Croatia. So, well done, Tony. Yeah, big fit 5-0 um, Happy birthday for the big 5-0. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, yeah that's right. Moving along All to right. uh, New, Newcastle, you know, Newcastle. I know. Newcastle, so, we're still, oh, Newcastle, we'll, we'll, we'll quickly finish off with Hurstville and Sydney United. So, Hurstville, they did have a, a, a one all draw last week against Union New South Wales. They are facing off uh, Newcastle Jets this week, second v third. Massive game for Hurstville. On, uh, if you're around on Saturday, get down to Penzhurst Park and get onto that. I think they're at home anyway. <laughs> I've got yeah. to check that. Special mention to the Hurstville under eight girls. Uh, they had a massive win on the weekend. Uh, so keep up the good work there with your girls um, group, Hurstville. Look how, look how great they look at in their glorious sunshine. Well done. Uh, the Sydney United women, Denzel Park, uh, 4-2 win over St. Mary's. That's their first winner of the year in the M League. Um, and Sydney United men, they uh, had a two-all draw to Mount Druitt Rangers that were down 2-0, uh, fought back and got themselves a point out of the game. A uh, little bit closer to eighth place Rockdale, um, but still a little bit away because their goal difference is uh, inferior. But this week they're against bottom place Northbridge Bulls. Over to the Hunter, mate. Newcastle Croatia going from strength to strength, mate. 4-0 win over Raymond Terrace on the weekend. Signing new players, Ricky Franks, and then today, Tomislav Jakovljevic. Um, from what I understand, Tomislav's uh, a family in born and bred Newcastle, so uh, I love that, love that sort of news. Well done for the, getting me up stuff. there, there Zivka. Uh, they had a catch-up match last night against Madawi. And they uh, came away 3-0 win on that. So they got with a couple of games in hand, they're sitting pretty on top of the ladder. All signs leading to promotion. I'm ready to take the lid off the Esky. I know they're not, but I am. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's go for it. The, the all-age guys had a big 5-1 win over university, sitting on top of their group as well. So it's just uh, it's going from strength to strength. And this week, they take on the city that's so good, they named it twice. Curry, curry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over to the Sunshine State, mate. Queensland, Brisbane Knights, one all draw with Slacks Creek on the weekend. Seventh place, Knights are at home to Ripley Valley this week. The Knights women in second place, they have a bye this week and they get to collect their thoughts after a 5-2 loss to Capalaba. And over to Gold Coast Knights. Uh, busy schedule for them. They have had a week that they probably want to just bury away a little bit. Unacceptable from their standards, mm. mate, because they've got high standards. We know that. Had a 2-0 loss to Pen Power in the Cup and a 4-1 loss to Olympic uh, in the league. They're hanging on to fourth spot at the minute. And they're home to Capalaba uh, on Saturday with the hope of turning their form around. I will finish the Aussie wrap with this, Tonchi. We've yeah. all been part of teams and clubs that have bad runs. And um, supporters might call that unacceptable. Um, I will ask keyboard warriors to be mindful that if you haven't been involved in running a club or know what it's like to run a club, before you can throw comments on a keyboard, uh, try rolling up your sleeves. Come to the table with some, yeah. sort, of pos- some sort of positivity. 
some sort of offering that maybe you can make your club the best club or even better than the best club. All right. Um, I'd like to see a bit more of that. Um, look, it's it's a difficult thing to put your hand up and be a volunteer and and put your put your neck on the line to do some work. That is a hard thing to do. Um, but my God, it's so rewarding. So come to the table with some positivity. What, what can you offer the club that makes you the best? Let's steer away from negativity and commentary that makes you look really ugly, like a dungeon. Mm. And look, especially we're all you know we're all foot, we're all fans. We, we we've got high standards, um, and we're very passionate. And that's the one thing about us Croatians. That's why we we punch above above our weight. And it's okay to be disappointed. Yep, fair enough. But to, it, yeah, as you say, to dare air dirty linen in public or to, to publicly sort of go against your club or even your community for that matter, um, it just doesn't serve any 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 purpose other than destabilising the club. Um, I'm That's not right. sure if you're talking about anything in specific or just anything in general, but it does apply to there anything. There's been a few the board, different you know? comments across different clubs across throughout the week, and I mm. just thought I, just, I don't like seeing that. You know, I mean, it's it's dear to me because I've I've worn my heart on my sleeve every time yeah. I represented my the club that I was with the, the longest, which was North Geelong, and I, and I wore it proudly. And mm-hmm. I, I know how hard everyone behind the scenes works to put it on display. It's not just something you pour out of a packet and it happens. It, there's work. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of work involved. Hundred percent, absolutely. Mate, on that note, well said. Um, I applaud that. That is a, a fantastic, um, fantastic little summation there at the end of a rather rich. As, and as you can see, there's so much happening, so much positivity happening in our Australian Croatian community, football wise. Um, I go back to that Newcastle, Croatia. What a great success story that is, and not just because you've been involved with that club or lived up there, but I mean because of because of um, the. Uh, because of um, um, the uh, rise or the re- re- resurrection resurgence. of Newcastle resurgence, Croatia yeah. resurgence. Look, one of the positive things that have happened in the Newcastle Croatian community is they've now got a folkloric group as well. So yeah. dare I say it's probably a, um, a side effect of, you know, the fact that the, uh, the the soccer club has now got itself off its feet and it's being run by second generation Australian Croatians. Um, not the first generation. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of them aren't around anymore. So give these people credit. Give these guys a credit. Anyone that wants to get involved. Now, on a note, we're going to take a break. When we return, we've got Dean Zlendich all the way from WA. He's going to give us an update with what is happening over across the Nullarbor. A lot is happening tonight. The football in the West on a Wednesday night. Don't go away, folks. Are you one of those people that just pays their business insurance each year? Insurance is the last thing we want to worry about when running our business day to day, unless there is a claim that needs to be made, right? And once we have our insurance in place, we just keep renewing it. We just find it too hard to shop around. Does that sound like you? Well, at your business insurance, we could save you money and get you a better deal. We'll review your current insurance and determine if you're getting the most favourable offers from the insurance market. Call your business insurance on 1300 767 456. Welcome back to the Oscrow Soccer Show. Uh, We have a special guest from all the way over the Nullarbor, President of the Western Knights, Dean Zlendich. Dean, welcome back to the Oscrow Soccer Show. Thanks for having me, boys. Great to be on the show again. Good stuff, Evening, mate. Dean. Uh, judging by that beanie, I'm sure you're not wearing that just for decorative purposes. It must be pretty cold out in the West tonight. Very cold, mate. We're um, <laughs> bit of a bit of a cold night. Yeah, I think it's down to about ten degrees tonight, so <laughs> it should be it should be a cold one. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Uh, yeah. It sounds like a bit of a crowd happening there. How's it looking? You got some good support. Yeah, we do. Um, they're, they're coming in now. Uh, it's a late, latish game for a midweek game, so um, it's almost seven thirty Perth time. So um, eight eight pm start. So um, yeah, a few people uh, are coming in now. And how are, and how the, are uh, the boys looking tonight? Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. I was going to say, how are the boys looking tonight? Are they really g'd up? Um, you know, have, have they uh, have they had a good week in, on the training track? Um, tell us what's the feeling like in the dressing room. 
Look, we, we had a, a, a bad loss on Saturday against Mandra in, in the State League. So, um, you know, we're hurting uh, because of that loss. So that, that puts us in fourth place in the league. Um, the last time we lost, um, uh, we, we ended up beating well up the, the, you know, a few days after. So hopefully that's, that's an omen. Hopefully we can, we can back up the same way we did um, the last time we, we played in the Cup um, against well up uh, in the round of 16. So, um, yeah, the boys are pretty upset with Saturday's loss. And, um, yeah, they definitely want to coming out for redemption tonight. Yeah, last time we spoke, we we talked about trying to have another a deep cup run, like in 2019. Yeah. Um, has that been a theme throughout the week in the build-up? Look, yeah, it has. I mean, you know, you play every game on your merits, and and you, you can only do what you can um, with the game coming up. So we don't don't think too far ahead. I, you know, it's a little bit cliche, but but that's certainly you know what our head coach and and our coaching team how they approach it um, week by week. So. Yeah, you can only dream. At the end of the day, we'd we'd love to, um, you know, get get close as close as we can uh, with with the cup competition. Um, yeah, tonight's an opportunity for us. Obviously, playing against an NPL, a strong NPL team um, in Bayswater. So um, yeah, we 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 feel like we've got a pretty strong team out in the track tonight. Um, and, and, you know, they just got to execute the plan. We've got a good plan in place. Adam's uh, put a good plan in place for the boys and uh, we feel like we can, uh, we can get the job done. Yeah, so is that, it's a full-strength lineup. Uh, look, we, we've got our main striker out tonight, so he's not playing. Um, but we've got a couple coming in. Um, so, yeah, we, we feel like, yeah, we've, we've got the right team to, to get, get the win tonight. Okay. Now, Dean, when we caught up with you um, with with Western Knights and had the um, uh, Western Knights the uh, club in focus, seems like yesterday, but it was almost about three months ago. Um, how would you how would you kind of assess the year the season so far from a from a president's point of view as far as the club is concerned? Oh, look, we're we're strong. We're we're really uh, you know almost halfway through the season. Like I said, off the park, we've we've hit a few bumps, and Saturday was was one of those. So. Um, you know, if we won that, we would have stayed in second spot. Uh, we've still got a game in hand. So, um, you know, with that with that game in hand and, and you know, with a win, we're, we'll, we'll go back up into second. So, look, yeah, really, really strong season. Um, you know, off the pitch, we're, we're doing everything right. We feel like um, we're, um, we're doing everything right. You know, we're having a lot of functions, a lot of activity, um, getting the, the community involved. Um, our juniors are, are really, really strong. If, if you recall, our, our last, um, the last time we we're on the show, you know, Alan Tomich, our head of juniors, is, is really getting the, the juniors um, side of things, um, you know, up and running and, and doing a great job. So, no, we're, we're, we're doing really well. We're really happy with yeah. how the season going, is, is going. I do notice on a weekly basis, there's always a bit of a cover off of one of the uh, under eights or under nines or under 11s. It's, it's wonderful to see that the numbers are there. And Tonchi, when you go to the, um, the, the club's uh, site on Football West and you see the numerous amounts of teams listed down, it's a really good yeah. site for them and their future building. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, Dean, the other thing that I wanted to ask you as well, like with um, with uh, Western Knights and all that. So, if if West if the Knights win tonight, are they automatically to the last round of thirty two, the next wide one, or the, is there still another hurdle that they need to overcome? Yeah, that's right. So we go into the semi final, um, and then um, yeah, then hopefully you know we can. But yeah, we got to get past this game, obviously. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm already looking ahead. <laughs> I'm confident. I'm really confident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, we're, we're quietly confident. Look again. Yeah, it, it's you, you take it week by week. And again, I don't want to be too cliche with, with that comment, but, but that's the way we approach it. And um, like I said, we, we've just got a plan. We've got to execute it. Every single player has to, has to execute the plan to the best of their, their yeah. ability. And if we do that, um, it's a little bit wet here as well. So. We feel like um, it was raining all afternoon, so we feel like that'll um, that'll work in our favour as well. Good. 
Well, I've looked, Dean, thanks for joining us. It's uh, nice of you to, to check in and give us a bit of a, a rundown of the preparations for tonight. We do wish Western Knights all the best. We've got every faith that they'll do it, and uh, it'll be great to ha hang on to two Croatian clubs in the cup yeah, round absolutely. going deep. Now, yeah, Tonchi? Now, quick question, uh, Dean. We know it's not being streamed live. Will there be updates on the Western Knights um, Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram or anything like that? Absolutely, there will. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll make sure that that we update that throughout the game. So I'll I'll, I'll double check, but yeah, we, we spoke about that, and and we want all our fans all across Australia um, to, uh, to to know what's happening and and how we're tracking. So yeah, we'll make sure that gets done. If we could have flown Ante Grabovac and Tony Chavar in time over there, we could have maybe done some sort of a stream or something and had them commentating. But uh, unfortunately, it ain't going to happen. But uh, would, would you mind just maybe sort of turning around so we can see a lot, little bit around that's happening there? There we How go. How about the 18th going at Gwellop there, by the way? Uh, they're, they're down 3-1. So, um, yeah, okay. they... It was um, it was one all and and uh, copped a couple of goals before half time, but they're yeah, doing yeah. doing okay. Yeah, there's a nice yeah. grandstand here, yeah, um, and yeah, good good sized pitch. So yeah, should be should be an exciting night. Well, if you're from WA, you're in the Perth area. There is still time to pop out there and uh, take in some midweek football action. And we wish all the very very best to uh, Western Knights and to the young Gwella boys there as well. Hopefully they can get back. Um, it's still 3-1 at the moment um, in the under-18s cup. Dean, God, God all the very best. Dean, God, the camera up in the stand, Dean. Dean, God, then I want the camera up in the stand. All right, good on you, Dean. And thanks for joining us all the way live from Perth. No, thank you to, to you both, guys. We really appreciate the support. And uh, it's a great show. So, well done. Thank you. Viva la Croatia. Viva la Croatia. Good on you. Yes, the Football Out West Show, the sister podcast of the Ozcrow Soccer Show. And um, Josipi, we've got some really big news about um, the Football Out West Show. The regular uh, co-hosts, my regular co-hosts, um, Craig Filer and Steve Curtin, are both unavailable this week. But we've got a very, very high-profile co-host stepping into the chair this Sunday mm -hmm. night to cover all things football in the western suburbs of Melbourne. Who might that be? Oh, he's been warming up for 20 rounds. <laughs> He's been warming up for 20 rounds. It's our, my great pleasure, absolutely our great pleasure to announce that uh, Josip Zilic will be stepping in the co-host chair on, um, on, on Sunday night. So Football Out West Look forward, show probably. fans, yeah, we'll have a pleasure of uh, Josip's company. Uh, Josip, let's turn our attention now to overseas. The European yeah. Nations League. Yeah. Is there some sort of purpose to this or not? Having a, a tournament like this in the... Uh, According to the Kevin De Bruyne in today's statement, or yesterday's statement, yeah. sorry, uh, yeah. it's a waste of time. It's a glorified friendly. Well, that's what <laughs> it seems they, to be they like. Lost four one, yeah. So, seems to be like that. Look, uh, the yeah, UEFA Nations League kicked off in the worst possible manner for Croatia. Um, looking very lethargic, looking like they really didn't want to be there. They lost 3-0 to Austria. Um, I suppose the most significant part of this game is the fact that it is going to be the last time that um, Croatia plays at the Gradski Vrt, home of NK Osijek, because the next time they play an international in Osijek, they'll be playing at the uh, Pampas Arena with a brand-new, super-modern um home to NK Osijek and football in Osijek. That is going to be unbelievable. 15,000 capacity stadium, fully undercover. It will be the best stadium by a mile in um, in Croatia. So yeah. uh, that's going to be something to absolutely look forward to. Then the uh, roadshow moved to split, 33,000 capacity there. 1-1, um, one, one, um, Croatia yeah. and France. Now, Josipe, after the World Cup in particular, <laughs> in Russia in 2018, I was never a big fan of the French, to be honest. And uh, I just no, I just don't 
in football terms, I don't particularly like him. But I take my hat off to the French Football Federation. Prior to the game, um, there's there's a big um, transparent, as they say, a big banner yeah. that the uh, um, split fans, oh, the fans in split, because there's a lot of fans from outside of split, all parts of Croatia, Herzegovina, all over yeah. Croatia that came there. Um, look at that. Tisi nash kapeta mismo tvoja luka. Basically translated, you are our captain, we are your harbour. Um, and um, a big uh, homage there to Luka Modric, who was um, playing his 150th game for Croatia. What and an the effort. French, the French have made, designed this very special um, top with um, 150 and Modric on the back there. Um, as, and, and presented to the great man and then... Um, Desham, Didier Desham said um, prior to the game, or in the post-match press, press conference, he actually said, look, Modric is one of the biggest players, the best players, like both at Real Madrid and to Croatia. His importance cannot be underestimated. And there's some more um, pictures there. 1-1, one, one, good result. But yeah. look at that fella down in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, um, what's his name? Erdlich. Um, I think it's blood in Erdlich, is it? Yeah. Um, he plays yeah. in Italy, yeah. Plays in Italy, made his debut for the Croatian national team. Um, six foot four uh, defender, um, you know, looked looked very good. Could be a, definitely a player of the future. But get this, he missed his own brother's wedding, so he could make his debut for the Croatian national team. <laughs> so when people say, um, "How much does soccer mean to to Croatians?" Enough to miss your own brother's wedding. He's, he's apparently from Zadar, so he's never yeah. played at the Poljud. He, he had a bit of a stint at the Rijeka. Oh, hang on. Well, Croatian weddings go for three or four days. He's only, he's only missing one day. <laughs> Absolutely. Probably got in time. Got back in time for the uh, for the midnight midnight Rajan and what you're not. Yeah. Oh, amazing story. How good is that? You really, really got to. Uh, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. All credit to him. And I, I'm yeah. Now, Croatia. Cry- Taking on Denmark, you'll see per Saturday morning, wee hours of Saturday morning. I think it's at 4.45 a.m. our time. So yep. that's round three. Remember, um, there's going to be six rounds in total in the Nations League. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I'm sure. I'd love to hear what people oh. think um, in, the, in the comments section. If, if you've got a thought about, you know, having the European Nations League um, played in the same year as the World Cup. Maybe this year's fine because the World Cup's in November. So it's a good chance to, like Erdlich, a good chance to, to blood a few players that you That's otherwise it. Look, you could just experiment a bit and probably when they come back, and when do they meet again in August, I think it is? Something uh, like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Three games. yeah then you yeah. can sort of maybe fine-tune it, tweak it a little bit to what you believe may be closer to your full-strength lineup. Yeah. I see mean, what the differences uh, are. Yeah, Luka Sucic is another young player. I think he's, he's, he's from Austria, a Croatian from Austria. I'm, he I'm plays in sure. Salzburg. Yeah, yeah, um, and he's just now becoming really, really uh, embedded in the um, in the in the team. Um, so it's great to see. It is an opportunity. And look, what, you talk about the keyboard warriors. Oh my gosh, in Croatia, they're all going on about Dalić has to be given the sack. This is a disaster, catastrophe. Um, and then you've got all the other articles about the atmosphere and split being really, really poor and this and that. Oh, folks, just get over it. He's no one. poima. Back to what Kalat used comment to say. There from, uh, comment from Luka Munivrana, another player that needs a good looking at is Luka Bogdan, not getting looked at uh, currently ooh. playing as centre back. Yeah. Yeah, where, and where's oh, there you go? And he's um, where's he playing? Luca Bogdan, there's another center, and that is you know, I guess. Look, we got we're blessed with a lot of good players, you know, you've got Josip Guardiola as well. But look, Doma Goivida, the veteran, yeah, he plays at Salernitana in the uh, Serie B. There you go. Um, yeah. Vida's on the way out, of course. Um, yeah, and there is, yeah. you know, he's old, yeah. he's Lovren as well. I mean, come yeah. on, we need need some new faces Shima, now, too. Shima's Shima's shot, he's gone they exactly. Keep... So it's yeah, they, they keep sort of bringing him to the line, but I, I get it. He probably wants to finish a, at a World Cup, and it's a what a way to finish your career if you're finishing it at a World Cup. But on the same token, you can't put the uh, the player ahead of the ahead of the team, ahead of the club the situation. No, know? exactly. Now, uh, Dinamo Zagreb fans, lots happening in Dinamo Zagreb. The first big signing, the first big signing of the off season. We've just finished one season, and guess what? Before you know it, the next season's around the corner. Josip Drmic um, from Rijeka, um, he has signed. 
um, on a free transfer, I, I believe. Uh, that's a big signing. He was uh, the number two goal scorer in the in the HNL at Rijeka, and uh, he'll be given an opportunity to really run amok at uh, Dinamo Zagreb. So that is going to be uh, a big, big, big boost for Dinamo. Um, Petkovic has, hasn't been in the best of form, Bruno Petkovic. Um, there's talk Mislav Orsic might be going to England, um, and if he does go, he'll go for a very, very good price. Um, so this is a, definitely a big pickup. Now, the other thing is the Bad Blue Girls, Josip. The Bad Blue Ooh. Girls is the first female supporters club, official female supporters club, that has been registered in Croatia. So wow. the Bad Blue Girls, they are now part even of... Get, uh, even they get out. That's right. Now, you know... Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be probably wel- welcomed down in split amongst uh, Torcida fans. <laughs> Not so much. I don't think so much about the Red Blue boys, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, no, that's some, some really, really interesting stuff happening there. Now, when we're talking about the Hrvatski Nogomet Nisaves and the HNL, so it's official, the Prva Liga, whatever you want to call it there, Litna Liga, which is being de- um, sort of mooted, it's actually going to be called the Hrvatska Nogometna Liga. And then we're going to have the Prva Liga, Druga Liga, Trecha Liga. So uh-huh. just to confuse things, the Prva Liga is really the second division. The Druga <laughs> Liga is really the third division. And the Trecha <laughs> Liga is really the četvrta, the fourth division. Okay? But above all that is the Hrvatska Nogometna Liga. So, okay. Like, thanks for that clarity, Tonchi. <laughs> does that make sense? <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Um, big news about the Hrvatska Nogometna Liga. After 11 years, it is back on HRT. Um, yeah. It is going to be like what they call the, the yes and So yeah. when when um, the, the clocks change back and all of that type of thing, they um, will then have every Sunday from 3 p.m. Um, a game. Now, that basically means that'll be, I think, 1 p.m. our time. So that'll happen around about, I think, September, October or thereabouts when the, when the clocks change. Um, the good thing about that is you're hired to being free to air. You're able to get that pretty easily over here through the app, the higher te, higher te e app or whatever it's called, or even yeah. on the website. So you'll be able to access the Drugi program or the second channel. Um, so those that don't have, um, here in Australia, for example, don't have, um, the, the internet TV or the IP TV will still be able to, um, tune into, uh, HRT the HNL via the HRT, all these abbreviations. But what they're saying in Croatia, obviously the big thing is is now being free to air, more and more people will be able to tune into the Hrvatska Nogometna Liga. And um, that, can, that can't that can be a bad thing. It's a four-year deal. So all in all, it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant little thing. Now, Good. speaking of TV, um, there's a reality show now, I hate reality shows. I don't know about you, mate. But um, there's a reality show called Utak Mitsa Jivota, uh, The Game of Life, um, on one of the Croatian television channels. I think it's Artel. Um, and the winner of that was a fella called Christian Kopjar. Um, so he won 100,000 kone. Now, there's something like 400 players that go for this, uh, whatever this um, competition is. It gets narrowed down to 30. And then um, I think it comes down to something like 16 or 17 or whatever it is. And then they ended up playing a game against the Croatian under-20s. And that was at um, Istra's um, um, stadium. The winner, whoever won the um, the actual reality contest, they would sign a professional one-year deal with Istra Pula. So mm. Christian Kopjar, uh, that fella in the middle there, we're in this sort of he's holding the green, yep. green kit, Oh well, that's yeah, keep, Paula's kit. Yeah, they've got. Yeah, keep an kit. eye out for him. Let's see if he's as good as uh, you know. Well, he, he bet four hundred other hopefuls, players from you know young guys. I think it was eighteen to twenty five years of age from all over Croatia, Bosnia Herzegovina, Austria. I think some even came to from Germany as well. So there was all sorts of players um, um, represented. Uh, moving along very very quickly now. NK Rudish. Okay, this is probably the last thing I wanted to mention. NK Rudish, they are a club, we've mentioned them in the Croatian second division, and they've got this motto, uh, Drukci or Drugi, different to all the rest. Now, what's your thought, Josip, on this? During the week, 
They've um, made a campaign that they want to be next year fighting for promotion to the uh, um, high nil. Now it's called Hrvatska Nogomet La Liga. For the last two years, they've finished second. Now they've started a um, social media campaign to attract any player that's played either in the first or second division in Croatia or has played somewhere in um, in, um, Wien or Zemstvo abroad. And um, they've got the contact details there. I know this day and age, it's a modern era, things are done a little bit differently, but a a club with a lot of serious ambition ambition and this and trying to attract players via social media, good thing or bad thing, what do you think? I was undecided, to be honest. Uh, I, I can see how... Casting the net makes them look like they're um, more of that back to their theme. You know, Drukci or Drugi, uh, we are going to do it differently to the rest. What And why not? They're not afraid to do something different. So they're backing up their statement. I get it. Um, but in terms of a professional club who has the ambitions to hit the uh, the highest league in the country, um, yeah. it can be seen as a bit of des- desperation or a desperate call. So um, look, time will, time will tell. But Good, good on them for trying something different. Yeah, it's something very different. I'm not too sure um, what they um, – well, well, look, at, at the end of the day, it's not how they do it, it's what they get. And if they yeah. get a really good quality player, I'm sure, um, you know, someone may see it and they may put their hand up and may come in for a trial. And ultimately, the, the coach there, um, you know, he, um, he will decide. Um, so interesting, interesting. Finally, mate, Dinamo Zagreb. As as a very proud Haidulkovac, I um I do say this with actual pride, um, believe it or not. Um, Dinamo Zagreb have been ranked as um the twelfth most successful team in Europe in the last five years, and this is points wow. scored for UEFA country ranking. They're yeah. ranked number ten. They've um got what sixteen thousand six hundred and twenty five points. Now look at the some of the teams. I mean, they're they're, they're ranking better than Manchester United. Atletico Madrid, Madrid, Sevilla, Sevilla. Roma, Juventus. I mean, honestly, this is just amazing what Dinamo Zagreb has done for Croatian football in Europe. Hopefully, as of this next season, we'll have Osijek doing well. We'll have um, Hajduk doing well. We'll have um, Dinamo doing just as well as they have been in previous years. But look, once again... We talk about a small country punching above its weight. That is amazing. And look, yeah. the best thing that could have happened to Hainel and to Dinamo Zagreb is that Hajduk now are a, are a serious threat to their title. And Osijek, once they get this new stadium, uh, Rijeka as well, they're going to go through a whole um, change as well. Uh, it's going to be an interesting competition next season, I'll be. tell you yeah. what. It'll be great. Yeah, breaking news. Um, round one fixtures are out. They just came out a few hours ago. So on the 16th of July, like I said, one season's just finished. Another season's about to start. <laughs> Istra at home to Hajduk. Varaždin, the newly promoted Varaždin, taking on Slaven Belupo, their near neighbours from Koprivnica. Dinamo Zagreb at home to Lokomotiva in the, in the Zagreb derby. Osijek at home to Gorica. And Šibenik taking on NK Rijeka. Lots of changes happening hmm. at Šibenik. Lots of changes happening at Rijeka. That's on the 16th of July. But before that, the big Super Cup, the first genuine Super Cup in, in, in many, many years or pre-season, what do you call it, Charity Shield or whatever they call it yeah. in England, Dinamo oh, versus Hajduk in Zagreb. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's on the 9th of July. Mate, we've got a lot. Wow. We've got through a lot tonight, haven't we? Got through a lot, mate. Uh, and before we do close off for tonight, I do want to make a call out to Nicholas Bilokopic, who we had on the show a couple of weeks back. Uh, he, he hasn't made a start yet for the under-23s, but the under-23s uh, Australian side has gone through to the uh, playoffs in the in the Asian Championship. So good luck. And we do hope that Nicholas gets on the park and, and plays for the green and gold. Great interview that last week with Nicholas Bilokapic. If you haven't seen it, go to our YouTube channel, Ozcrow Soccer Show. Um, and in fact, we've got all of our program programs, all of our 20 episodes, um, some great interviews there as well. Uh, Josip, we'll see you Sunday night for the Football Outwear Show on uh, at 7 p.m. And we Look will be simulcasting that Football Outwear Show through the Ozcrow Soccer Show um, Facebook page as well. 
Yep. I'm looking Good forward day. to it, mate. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, once again, yep. thank you very much for joining us on tonight's show. It has been a great show with lots and lots of news. Any last uh, progress scores before we before we go, or it's still 3-1? For Bayswater. Uh, it was still 3-1 for Bayswater and um, Western Knights kick off in 14 minutes. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Good night, folks. Thank you for being a part of tonight's show. Bye-bye. Back much. Bye.